Well, the old girl finally laid down on me. She blew a head gasket. So that means we gotta tear the top of the motor apart. You know what else that means? We're gonna hot rod her. It blew a head gasket probably 10 months ago. Well, I put some bars leak in it and that stopped it for several months. And then probably a month or two ago, it, uh, it blew again. Every time I'd shut it off, I could hear it gurgle in the recovery tank. And I was pretty sure, you know, it done blowed in again. Uh, so I did a hydrocarbon test the other day and sure enough, getting hydrocarbons out of the radiator. Um, well, what actually made me decide to go and do this is <laughs> a couple weeks ago, it built up so much pressure in the coolant system that actually split my upper radiator hose. So I was like, yeah, I think it's probably time to go ahead and change head gasket. What's weird is it never misses. It runs like a brand new one. It's just, well, it never overheats. It's just, well, I ain't never seen one do that before. Anyway, I figured, well, if I gotta go that far into the motor, let's go ahead and hot rod it. I went to the junkyard a couple weeks ago and found two, not one, but two sets of Vortec heads that check out good, no cracks. So one set of them's going on here. I'm gonna put a four barrel on it. We're gonna put a pretty good cam in it and we're gonna have us a hot rod four wheel drive. So let's get that hood popped right there. Let's get started. Well, I reckon the first thing we'll do is we'll drain the Wata out of it and then uh, take the radiator out and all that. And I'm not real sure. I'm gonna say the condenser coil has got to move out of the way. I don't know if I gotta unhook it. We're gonna try to not do that because I don't feel like charging the system again. Probably gonna take the grill out too. So anyway, let's get started. Here's something else that's odd about this. The oil level is about right there. It's supposed to be there, which is not super duper high, but it is high. And that tells me I've got water in the oil. Why does this not look like chocolate milk? Very interesting. What do y'all think about that right there? It's a magnet, but it also has a little light where you can see what you're trying to pick up. Pretty doggone handy. I tell you what, I hate working on anything past mid eighties or so. It's, well, the engineers just went stupid. You got one bracket here that holds alternator and the power steering pump on it, and that's fine. I've already got three bolts out over here. Well, there's one over here behind the power steering pump. You can't get to it with anything. Only way you can get it out, get the power steering pump out of the way. Well, there's three bolts behind this pulley that you gotta get off before you can get the power steering out of the way. Instead of putting a hole in this pulley where you can stick a socket in there and get those three bolts, well, that's just too easy. You can't do that. <laughs> uh, you got to go rent a puller and pull the pulley off, then get those three bolts off, then get the power steering pump out of the way, then get that bolt off. It's just, well, stuff like that, it just, well, it boggles my mind. I'll, I'll never understand it. Anyway, I had to go rent a pulley puller. I'm gonna probably keep it, because I'm sure I'll need it eventually. Let me get this, uh, get these brackets off.
Well, I broke two manifold bolts off, one there and one there. I'm gonna try to take a head off, then I can hopefully get the intake off because, well, you know, the bolts are angled this way. You're not gonna pick it straight up. Uh, that's the only thing I know to do. Cause I'm not gonna fight, try to get them out. I don't care about the heads or the intake. If we have to get violent, I'm good with that. I uh, just don't wanna mess the block up. But anyway, that's why I'm fixing to pull a head instead of the intake first. What I'm gonna do to make things a lot easier on me, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this header out of the way and aim the three bolts on the collector and it should slide right out. All right, let's see if this will come out of here. Well, oh yeah. If we can get this head off without tearing everything up, probably not. And let me see if I can try this intake off back here. Maybe it'll come off this stud. All up here. Oh, we got it. We got it. Ain't no need to worry. We got it. I want to pull this head off first because this is the side that it blew with the head gasket on. Uh, usually, whenever you blow a head gasket, your top of your piston and your valves and combustion chamber, they're going to be shiny like a brand new one. It's, it's sort of steam cleans them, I guess. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. All right, let's pull this head gasket off. Have a look, see at it. Well, I don't see anything. Very interesting. Well, it's getting dark on me. I had to get my work lights out because I want to get this done tonight. The tear down, not putting it back together. I'm still waiting on parts. I don't know why, but it has took about three times as long as it should have. To get this apart today. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's getting on my nerves for what it's doing. I don't think I'm going to have to uh, take this header off over here. I believe I can get the bolts. I can't really see what I'm doing now. I really need that light. Oh, yeah, there went my, there went my little platform. One day one. <laughs> well, my little platform here that I'm standing on, it decided to come out under my feet. My feet were dangling. Well, my knee hit my headlight, busted the headlight uh, mounting part. So it's just flopping now. Well, that's good. <laughs> I ain't got but one more bolt in this head. Why in the devil <laughs> can't I just get it out without a bunch of rigmarole? I ain't pulling that header off for one dead wing bolt. I, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. You will come out of there one way or another, bud. Well, my battery quit on me. So now I get to use the old fashioned ratchet. Uh. Uh. There you go. Never in my life seen nothing like that bolt right there. Alright, I said we can't get this head loose. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on out of there. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm hooked to something. Ground strap. Let me get that off. Ooh. Ooh. Or I could just break it. <laughs> I have to make another end for it, I reckon. Come out of here, you son of a gun. Oh! Oh yeah! Well, we got the heads off, and upon further inspection, I see where the head gasket blew. This is the driver's side, and number seven, like I thought, you can see right 
there right in that area there that's where she blew it's kind of weird that the valves ain't shiny i guess it probably wasn't sucking in any water it's probably just leaking on compression and combustion and you know that's where all the pressure was coming from in the cooling system anyway uh let's get the front of the motor off Good gracious alive. <laughs> that change is absolutely wore out. Good grief. I know y'all probably can't see what I'm doing. Uh, I know it's only got dark. But I'm trying to get the lifters out. Well, some of them don't want to come out real easy. Well, what you got to do, take that magnet. Just keep working it up and down and well what it is i don't know if y'all can see that or not the bottom is dark well that's from oil i don't know getting baked on it or whatever well that's what it's catching on it's sort of sticky you keep working it up and down till it gets up enough then you get your pedal needle nose uh vice grip you grab a hook of that sucker just like that right there then you will go working it up and down and she'll come right out. Ta-da! Well, I got the grill out. Got the condenser coil out of the way. So maybe now we can get this dead lame cam out of here and I'll be done for the night. Oh, yeah! There's the old cam. Well, it's completely dark now and I apologize for that, but... I wanted to get it tore down. Uh, it's supposed to rain tomorrow all day. So I wanted to go ahead and get it tore down, see what we was working with. And everything looks pretty good. I don't really see any cross hatch, but there's not very much ring ridge at all. I'm very pleased with that. This motor, like I said, the truck's probably got 230, 240,000 on it. The motor, when I bought this truck, it was sitting at a garage, uh, motor pulled out, being rebuilt. It had about 75,000 miles on it. These trucks, 88, 89, and some of the 90s, they would wear out really quick. And uh, once you bored them out, they were fine. Obviously, you know, this motor's got about 150,000 on the rebuild. And she don't smoke. I mean, it's just, it's a good running motor. Always has been. Uh, anyway, I'm very pleased that it uh, don't have no more wear than it does. And something else, too. The, uh, I don't know what year Chevrolet started the roller cams. But I do know these TBI blocks, they all have the provision for the uh, roller cam stuff. And you can see the boss is here. There's three of them there. That's where your spider bolts down. And you got a cam retainer plate that goes here. Well, I was only expecting to see the bosses, but they're already drilled and tapped too. So I don't even have to do that. These, these here are tapped too. So that's awesome. I don't have to do that. Everything should bolt right up. You got dog bones that hold the uh, lifters in place because you know they're roller i'm going to roller cam i guess i should have told y'all that huh <laughs> i'm going to roller cam on this motor and uh it's got dog bones here that hold the lifters in place keep them from rotating and then a spider bolts in these three places and holds them dog bones down and then like i said you got a cam retainer plate here because a roller cam is flat uh, you know, a hydraulic flat tabbit cam has a little bit of taper on the lobes and it makes the cam push back. Well, you can't do that on a roller cam. It's got to be flat. Well, it tends to make it walk forward. So you got to put this uh, cam retainer plate on there. If it's a retrofit, you got to have a cam butt. Anyway, I'm going to spray these cylinders down with WD-40 to keep them from rusting. Supposed to rain tomorrow all day. I'm going to cover this motor up because I don't know if the hood leaks. We'll get after it again in a couple of days. Well, it's the next day, and since it's going to rain on us all day, well, let's just stay in the basement, and we'll work on these heads that I got from a junkyard the other day. Two sets of uh, Vortec heads. These are 906s. These are 062s. I think I'm going to use these because these were rained in a little bit. The intake ports, they're a little bit rusty, and the cooling passages just look a little rough, so they're going to need some cleanup work. I don't feel like doing it right now. But I will say... Two sets of heads for $90, not bad. Spent $25 getting a Magnaflux. 
That's pretty doggone cheap for some heads. They claim these are the best flowing iron heads that GM put out. And there's two more trucks at the junkyard. And I may go back and get them heads too. And they're, like I said, they're, they're cheap for you know how good they are. Anyway, what I want to do to these today is we're going to disassemble them. And we're going to put in uh, screw in rocker studs. So let's get busy doing that. All right, I got the head disassembled. Let me show y'all how you pull these studs. You buy this little apparatus right here. Uh, one side is just a guide. The other side is threaded about halfway. That's a guide to run your tap down after you pull that stud. Well, some use this to pull the stud. They'll put it there, put your nut, tighten it down, pull the stud up. Well, it'll beat and bang that up pretty bad. So what some do is they'll get the rocker arm pivot ball They'll put two or three on there, put a nut on there, tighten it down, it'll pull the stud, but not all the way. Take the nut off, you'll put another on there, tighten it down, and it'll pull the rest of the way. That's how I'm going to do it. Anyway, once you get the stud pulled, you put this thing down here, tighten it up, and run your tap down in there. Like I said, this is just a guide for the tap to be straight, because you don't want them cockeyed. Anyway, run your tap down in there, and that's pretty much it. So, I think what I'm going to do... Just to show y'all, I'm gonna do this set here and then I'll do the rest off camera. Well, like a big dummy, <laughs> I forgot to hit record. Well, as y'all can see there's not, maybe I shot. I already got that one pulled, so, well, let me do this one here and actually show y'all how to do it. All you do is get your three rocker arm pivot balls, put them on there like that right there. Put your nut on like that right there. Uh, now you see how the threads want to go down to here. You don't want to run that nut all the way down on that because you'll gall them and well, you ain't gonna have a good time. What you want to do is run it down a little bit, take your socket off and look, see how much thread you got. When you get enough thread to put another ball on, well, stop, take that nut off, put another ball on. You do not want to gall them threads. And there it is. One pressed in stud removed. All right, now that you got your stud pulled, what you want to do, put this down on there. Like I said, this is just a guide for your tap. Half of it's threaded. Uh, put it down with the threaded side towards the head. Put it on there and just snug it down for right now. Don't tighten the nut up. Then what you want to do, get your tap started in those threads that are in this block. Then get that tap started about like that right there. Then you want to tighten this nut up and then go and run that tap down. Some have said that this guide is off and it's it's sort of acting like it is off but let's just see how it does on cutting the threads i mean that feels okay cast iron i love working with cast iron anyway it cuts and threads just wonderfully uh tell you what let me run that in just a little bit more and we'll take it off and look at it yeah it's not it's not centered greatly. Look like it's that way a little bit. But a lot of them will elongate that hole. And I guess that's okay because all this is for is to keep you perpendicular. It'll center itself over the hole. So I'll tell you what we might do. I might go ahead and elongate that hole and make it center up on that a little bit better. Let's do that. All right, I just drilled this hole to a 27 64th and tried it on this set and it looks pretty well centered so i think that'll work so let's put it back on this one here and uh, we'll give her another try like i said all this is is a guide to keep your uh tap straight up and down so it don't matter if that's a little oversized All 
iron. It's starting, so let me tighten this up a little bit. Now let's run her on down and see what she does. It ain't as smooth as that other one, but it's probably because we already started tapping it. But all you want to do is get it started, and then you can take this apparatus off, pull this tap out, take the apparatus off, and then tap it the rest of the way. Uh, these bosses, some of them can go into the water jacket, some of them can go into runners. So you must use thread sealer on these studs when you put them in for the final time. So just remember that. It's a good possibility that in there went through the water jacket. Let me take it out and we'll look. Yes, sir. We went all the way through water jacket on that one. So I just, I just go show you. Got to use thread sealer on them. All right, let me blow that out and we'll stick a stud in it. All right, this is just a trial fit. I ain't putting no thread sealer on it right now. But on the final assembly, run all the way down, tighten it to, I don't know, 20, 25 foot pounds, probably enough. You don't want to get too aggressive with the torques because all you got is just a little bitty old lip right there. And well, you just, you don't want to get rough. Now to do the other side, it's just the same but the opposite. You'll use your little uh, pivot balls, pull it off, and uh, put it over here, and run your tap down in there, and there you go. I think I'll go ahead and do the rest of them, and then I'll be back, and I'll show you what I'm doing on the uh, valve springs and all that. All right, I got screw-in studs on this head all the way across. And the final assembly, I don't have any thread sealer on it. I'm going to take it back apart. i got to clean this head real good. But uh, you might be wondering, well, why did you do that? What was wrong with the Preston studs? Well, when you go to hot rodding, you put a bigger cam in. That means higher lift. That means higher RPM. And the Preston studs, well, they have a tendency to pull out. So you pull them out. And you put in screw in studs, and well, if you pull out one of these, you got some issues. But that's just, well, it's just to keep from, you know, pulling them studs out, because it does happen. Uh, now, what I got to do is check the, uh, how much clearance I've got for the lift I've got on the cam. These Vortec heads from the factory, they, they can't handle, I want to say 450 thousandths lift max in their stock configuration. Some people will come in here and well, they'll take to a machine shop and they'll machine these bosses down where you got more clearance and run better springs. This, what I'm doing, this is how you run higher lift without machine. Most people, this is what they do. They get what is called a beehive spring. It's, well, it's sort of tapered. It's the LS6 beehive spring is what it's called. Uh, it's stiffer than a stock spring. That's a stock spring right there. Uh, when you go to higher lift and more duration and higher RPM, you got to have stiffer springs. Uh, what you do to keep from having to run double springs, you get a beehive spring. It's a single coil. You don't have to machine the boss down right there. It just fits right over it. Then this is the lot of the retainer you have to run with the beehive spring. Now to get more lift, clearance. I bought what they call offset uh, locks right here. They lock onto the valve stem. These set the, where well, they got little grooves. Actually the valve has grooves and these got little things that hook into the groove and it sits down in that retainer. That, you know, keeps the valve from flying out of the head. Well, these are offset 50 thousandths. They raise this retainer up 50 thousandths, which gives you more clearance between here and the bottom of this retainer. Let me let me put it together and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. All right, I got this assembled minus the spring because you can't leave it on and, and uh, check what I want to. Basically what you want to do is you want to check from, I already put a valve seal on here by the way. You want to check from the top of that valve seal to the bottom of the retainer up in here and uh, see how much movement you got. Because if you've got, say, 400,000 clearance here, 
but you got a 450 thousandths lift cam, well, you're gonna smash into that uh, valve seal and the top of the valve guide, and well, it ain't gonna be good. You're gonna bend stuff and break stuff. So you have to know that clearance right there. There's, there's a few ways you can do it. I've seen some of them cut a piece of wire, stick it in here, and uh, then push it down here and check it with, I don't know how they do that. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it is put uh, my dial indicator on here, stick it right here, push it down, see how much movement I got. So let me get the dial indicator set up. All right, I put the stock retainer and locks back on there. Uh, let's just see what kind of max lift we can have with it. There's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, a little over 500, and you want 50 thousandths clearance or so. So the max lift on this would be about 450 with the stock retainer. All right, now I've got the LS6 Beehive retainer with the, the 50 thousandths offset uh, locks. Let's see what kind of lift we can have with it. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, pretty close to 600. So you can have 550 lift with this setup right here. And that's, that's more than enough because my cam is 474 lifts. So we're good there. All right, now that we got one head done as far as the screw and studs go, we got our clearances checked, we're good there. I'm gonna put this over there in the purple power tank because it's pretty grimy. I'm gonna get that cleaned up. And whilst it's soaking, we'll get that head over here and do the same thing to it. Well, I got all the screw and studs done on head number two, but I forgot to check something. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. When you use these offset uh, keepers locks like I did, well, it moves the retainer and everything up uh, closer to the end of the valve stem. And it's a possibility that the bottom of the rocker arm right there can hit either the lock or the retainer. So you have to check that clearance. And I already have, and well, y'all can see right there. Let me get my thing here and point. Uh, right in here is where I'm talking about. And you can see I got plenty of clearance. You wanna work it through its range of motion and check it and I did and it's, it's fine. So I'm gonna drop this one in the tank of, uh, what's that called? Purple power. I'm gonna leave them over the weekend, let them soak and cause it's pretty grimy in here. And I wanna get all that cleaned up. And then, I don't know, Monday or Tuesday, we'll put these things back together. Well, I just got done scraping and cleaning on that second head right before I put it in the purple power. And that right there is what I got out of the intake runners. I'm pretty sure I just gave that head a mild port job. Got one of the heads out of the purple power. Got it all cleaned up. It looks pretty good. I got the dog bones and spiders cleaned up. Got the push rods cleaned up. You can't see them. Uh, what I'm doing now is this, this is a straight edge. I'm checking his head for flatness. What you do is you get a straight edge, put it on there. Get your feeler gauge. This is one and a half thousandths. That's the least uh, feeler gauge I got. And you just try to stick it up under the uh, straight edge. And if it goes under, well, then you go up to the next size feeler gauge. Keep doing that till it won't go under. You get a general idea of, you know, how flat your head is. Mine, one and a half won't go. Uh, so it's pretty good. I think four thousandths is like max. Uh, it can be out. You move it around to all different ways and keep checking it. I've done that. Mine checks good, so I believe this head's going to be okay. Now what I'm going to do is, I already got an exhaust valve in it. Uh, I'm going to lap these valves in, and then I'm going to put the springs on it, put it together, and I think we're going to call it good. All right, let's get these valves lapped in. If you ain't never seen that, well, let me show you real quick on one of them. This is lapping compound. This is fine. That's coarser. I'm going to go straight to the fine. All you do is get some of it on your finger, put it around the face of the valve there, just like it right there. Then I put a little WD-40 on, on the stem down in the guide so it'll slide around and turn easy. You stick it down in there and then you get your little stopper turner thing, stick it on that valve just like that right there, and you just go to turn. You lift it, you turn, you lift it, you turn, you lift it, and turn. That's pretty much all you do. And I'll be back when I think I've done this enough, and I'll show you the rest of it. All right, that's starting to feel pretty good. The reason you turn it and lift, turn it and lift, well, as you're turning it, that grit compound 
goes away. And you lift it and it'll bring it back to it. And then you turn it, it'll go away. You lift it and bring it back to it. Just keep doing that until it feels like it ain't cutting no more. And then it's time to, uh, well, it's time to at least look at it. And uh, you might have to do it again, put some more compound on it. But let me get this cleaned off and we'll look at it and see what it looks like. Well, now, let us see what it looks like. This is an exhaust valve. It ain't real pretty. It's a good thing I decided to do this because I believe it needed it. Well, that exhaust valve still, it ain't, it ain't looking real good. I'll tell you what, uh, let me go to the coarser uh, compound. Let's just see if that don't help it a bit. All right, that's the uh, coarser compound. Let me clean it off, see what she looks like. Yeah, it's looking better. Uh, I need to do it some more though. That, uh, that exhaust valve is a little bit pitted. Yeah, let me do that a little bit more. All right, let's check that and see what she looks like. Oh yeah, that's much, much better. Look at the seat. Yep, yeah, that's a lot better too. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of fine and uh, then I will go on down the head till we get them all done. I'm hitting this with a fine grit now. Uh, some of y'all may not know why you do this. You may be wondering why. Well, your valve face, the face is this part here and the seat is what's in the head. They're supposed to mate perfectly. You don't want any air escaping during compression or combustion. Well, then get corroded or whatever, you get dirty. And uh, you have to, well, sometimes you have to do a valve job. You have to grind them and all that. But most of the time you can get away with just lapping them back in and it'll be all right. When I get done doing all these, I'll put springs and uh, everything back on. And I'll pour water in the combustion chamber and let it sit overnight. And if I don't have any water leaking out, well, then we're good. Let me show y'all real quick uh, what you're going for when you're lapping the valves in. Uh, you can see right here, that's where the face of the valve is going to sit. But it's not real shiny. You know, it's kind of dull. And, well, there's just crap on it. Well, here's one I just did. See how clean it looks? Kind of shiny. Well, the valve face, you want it the same way, right? Here, you want that nice and clean looking. That's what you're going for. So they'll seal up real good. Well, I got one head pretty much ready. I got the uh, valve seals and the springs on. I got to decide what thread sealer I'm going to use for these rocker arm studs. But for now, I'm going to flip her over, put some Wata in the combustion chambers, and we'll come back tomorrow and check it. Well, I got the Wata in the combustion chambers, as you can see. And I didn't have to wait till the next day. I got two exhaust ports leaking Wata right there. Got this one here leaking too. So, that's good. Uh, I'll wait till tomorrow. It's late. I'll hit these. Well, I'll probably hit all the exhaust again with the rough. Uh, because they were kind of pitted. I might even need new valves. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Well, it's the next evening, and I just got done lapping these valves in again. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Them exhaust valves is pretty rough, really pitted. It needed a valve job, but I don't have the time to do it. I don't have the time to wait on somebody else to do it. So, uh, well, let me show you what I did. See this drill? I took a piece of hose. I stuck it on that drill bit. Stuck the other end on the valve stem, went to town. He cut the time way down, you know, compared to doing it by hand. Um, I think we're good now. It's been sitting here with this water in it, I don't know, 30 minutes. And you can see there is no leaks in the exhaust anymore. Of course, there's none in the intakes because they weren't leaking uh, last night. Uh, I think we're good, but uh, let me say this real quick to all you know-it-alls. Yes, I know about the surface tension of water. Yes, I know there's probably better liquids to use, but... This is what I've always used. It seems to do pretty good. This ain't Dale Earnhardt's engine shop. This is this and that garage's backyard butchery. So I think it'll do for, for what I'm doing. Anyway, let me get that other head done, and maybe tomorrow we'll be able to put this motor back together. Let me show y'all what I'm working with on these exhaust valves. Here's one that's untouched. You see all the little pits? Well, let me lap it a little bit, and uh, it'll show them pits a lot more. And there it is with, I don't know, about a minute of lapping. You can see all those uh, little pits a lot better, but it's cleaning it up. 
Let me lap it a little more and I'll show you the final product. And here's the end result. There's still a few small pits. I think it'll be okay. Especially like I said for what we're doing here at this and that garage's <laughs> backyard butchery. <laughs> here's a shot of the seat. It looks pretty good too. Um, I guess now I gotta run through them with fine grit and then I'll be done with lapping. Here's my drill set up. It's just a piece of hose in between the valve and the drill bit. And you just turn it slow, work it in and out a little bit. That's about all you gotta do. Well, I just thought I'd throw this in here in this video. Uh, some of y'all been asking about the shop. Well, here it is. <laughs> That's all I got done. I think I've had time to work on it maybe two days. Uh, the last two or three projects, the videos I've done, they have been bears. And they took way, way longer than they should have. Just, you know, every little problem you think of popped up. I just haven't had time. I can't get caught up on the videos. Videos are number one. Uh, I'm a one-man operation, by the way. It ain't nobody but me behind this channel. I do all the videoing, all the work, all the editing. I'll work on the uh, projects, you know, every day, eight, 10, 12 hours. And then I gotta come home and do two or three hours of editing just about every night. And on top of that, you know, housework, cleaning, cooking, doing dishes and clothes, cause you know, I am single man. So <laughs> I'm truly a one man operation, but we'll get this shop built, I promise you. Hopefully by next spring, will be done i'd like to get done sooner but you know weather's done turned cold so anyway i just you know i just work on it whenever i can well fellas <laughs> it's turned cold here in tennessee i had to push the old truck in the garage and as you can tell <laughs> i cleaned the garage up for this occasion <laughs> i'm telling you it took an hour just to make enough room to get this truck in here i do have the old fiery dragon going though it's knocking the chill off at least uh, got my heads all done. Got the screw in studs all uh, torqued down. Got the valve springs in and all that. And they're good to go. I think what I'm going to do right now is clean up all the gasket services. Do the same thing with the deck. Clean up the lifter valley. I got to get that sprocket off the crank. Uh, I'm going to put y'all on time lapse for that. So let's get busy. Well, I do believe I got everything cleaned up. Got all the threads cleaned out. Uh, I believe she's ready to go back together. So I guess first thing we're gonna do, take that uh, sprocket off that crankshaft right there, put the new one on, put the cam in, and then we're gonna degree the cam. Loads I can beat <laughs> before I get it in. 
Oh, look up there. Look up there. All right, let me give you the specs on the cam real quick, and I'll give you the part number too. Part number is 08-414-8. It's an extreme 4x4 cam is what it is. Um, uh, the, where is it that specs? It's a 230, 234, 50 thousandths. 474 lift on the intake and exhaust. Lobe separation angle of 111 and uh, intake center line 107. That's what we're gonna set it at when we degree it. Now y'all might be wondering, why am I gonna degree this cam in? Well, if it was stock rebuild, I wouldn't worry about it. But, you know, I'm trying to build horsepower and you want everything, you know, making max horsepower, you know, within reason, I'm not, you know, a nut and got to have every little bitty thing just right, but I do want to degree this cam in. Uh, they could have ground the lobes off. They could have drilled these holes off. That pin could be off. You keyway down there on the on that sprocket could be off. Your teeth could be off. I mean, it could be, you know, a little bit of everything. So you want to make sure the cam's right. Well, let me tell you this story real quick. Uh, Y'all might remember me telling you back in one of the Lockjaw videos uh, when I was 16, 17, 18. I spent the summers in North Carolina with my sister. Guy out there, I learned a lot of about uh, building motors and hot rodding them. Well, we built a motor for my brother-in-law's little brother's dirt car. 350, you know, back in you know, late 80s. Double hump heads, you know, did all the little tricks you could. Well, you know, put a cop cam in it, went to the track, and it ran like a dog. Come back that next week, trying to figure out what was going on. Well, the, the, the guy that built the motor, he called cop cams, and they told him, degree the cam. So he did, and it was off. So, you know, he did the necessary measures to get it back like it's supposed to. I'm telling you, it ran like a scalded dog after that. And uh, my brother-in-law's brother, he started winning races after that. So that, ever since that happened, if I'm building a motor for horse buyer, I always degree the cam in. Let me get this cam retainer plate in to get the cam sprocket chain and all that on. Then I'll uh, show you how you degree a cam in. I put Loctite on these little bolts for this retainer plate because I don't want it to come out. Oh, come here, crazy fool. Give it all the torques, all the feedage pounds. Line it up dot to dot. 20 feedage pounds is what you torque these to. Do without oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let me show y'all real quickly how you find top dead center with a dial indicator. I got the dial indicator set up. Got my degree wheel on. Got me a pointer made out of a coat hanger. Um, here's why you have to do this. Because when the piston is at top dead center, It'll sit there and won't move for a few degrees of crankshaft rotation. So it's hard to find it with just a dial indicator. You have to use math to do that too. Firstly, let me tell you this. If you're ever rotating the engine, you know, using the dial indicator, always go the direction that the motor normally goes, which is clockwise, because you want to take up slack in, in your timing chain. What you want to do is roll it. Well, I done went past. Let me back it up. What you want to do, going clockwise rotation, you will keep turning it over until your dial indicator quits moving, basically, which will be approximately right there. Now, you want to zero your indicator right there. Now, what you want to do is go 50 thousandths on this dial indicator on either side of top dead center. So. I'm going to go before top dead center right now, so I'm going to go uh, counterclockwise, go past 50 thousandths and come back, because remember, I want to go in a clockwise fashion always. All right, there is 50 thousandths, and our pointer reads 356 degrees, so let me write that down. Now what you want to do is go 50 thousandths past after top dead center. So you see, you'll go to zero and it'll come back down and you go 
Crocs well and went past it. Move back up. About right there. We are sitting on 20 degrees. Uh, let me write that down and uh, do some maths and I'll, I'll explain it to you. All right, here are the numerals that I wrote down. We got that one first, then we got that in second. Well, basically, what do you want to do is get dead in the middle of those two numbers. So the degree wheel, it only goes to 360. So that's four numbers there. Add that to the 20, that makes 24. Split the difference, 12. So you either add 12 here or take 12 away here. If you add 12 here, that's eight. Take away 12, that's eight. So if I roll the crankshaft around till my little pointer is at eight degrees, then we're at true top dead center, then we can carry on and uh, dial the cam in. All right, this is basically the same idea as finding top dead center. You're just trying to find the top of the intake load. Uh, I put a lifter in, I got a push rod in, got the dial indicator on, on the end of the push rod. You want that as straight as you can get it. You know, if it's got it leaning, it'll, it'll throw your reading off. Anyway, you just keep turning the uh, crankshaft until your needle stops moving, just like the other way. That's about right there. Now I'm going to move it to zero. And do the exact same thing like we did on the piston. I'm going to bring it back 50 thousandths. But of course, I want to go past it. And then bring it back because you want to keep going the same direction rotation of the motor. About right. Oh, went past it. Let me go back. Approximately right there. We are on 68. Well, it's 67 and a half. We'll call it 68, but let me tell you this. After we found top dead center here, you're supposed to move your degree wheel to zero. That indicates top dead center. I didn't because I'm afraid if I loosen this bolt, I would disturb the piston where it's at, and, well, it just throw me off. So I was at eight degrees. I'll just have to allow for that. So we're showing 67 and a half. Let's just say 68. So minus eight, 60. Let me write that down. Now, just like with the piston, you want to go back the other way and get on the other side of the lobe at 50 thousandths. I went too far because I just was not paying attention. Got to bring it back. Approximately right there. We are at 161, I'll say. Let me write that down. I meant to say 161 minus 8, so that would be 170, 153. All right, I did some maths, and here it is. Uh, that's the numbers we got off the degree wheel. If you want to know the difference between them, that's 93. Well, then you want to half that and then add it to that number or take it away from that number, which, well, half of it's 46.5. Uh, that comes out to 106.5. Supposed to be 107, pretty doggone close to me. I ain't gonna worry about a half degree. I probably got that much error in the way I did it. It's looking like we ain't gonna get it done in time for this week's video. So I'm gonna cut it off right here. I'll tell you what, I don't know if it's cause I'm getting older, getting slower, but it just seems like it takes forever to get anything done anymore. The last two or three projects, it took two or three times as long as it should have. I don't understand that. Maybe I am getting older and slower. Uh, anyway, hopefully we'll get it done for next week's video. I believe she's going to sound pretty doggone good with this new cam. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit the like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.